Um, people have asked, uh, you've talked about it here and there in interviews, but I don't think we've ever done a full breakdown of um, the situation with Shaquille O'Neal and why you believe he truly left um, L.A. as far as the Lakers. Yeah, I wanted to research it a little more. Didn't research it like I wanted to. Y'all know what that means. Talking to the actual police officer and that was involved in the case. But I have talked to police officers before. Because like I said, y'all don't know that this was a guy that was on Greg, Greg Cady's original task force that handled this. Mm. But anyway, so what happened was Shaq somehow got up under and for those of y'all don't believe it, say, oh, Shook Hill Hall, they don't need to hang out with no Main Street uh, Mafia Crip guys or gang members. That's crazy. <laughs> Never heard of that before. Well, just go listen to him. Check one of his latest podcasts where they talked about Dale Dog and gave him a shout out and all of that on that particular podcast. And so Shaq was in deep with mainstream mafia. As y'all f- saw from the, uh, the interview that, uh, we posted up about WAC 100 and uh, my boy uh, Stutterbox all doing that interview with the smoke detector going off. He was hollering, Main Street Mafia. He threw up the sign and everything. And so this is what happened, y'all. They were eating. Jack was looking out for them, hooking them up and taking good care of them, which whatever reason, it didn't happen. Cash Money did it with uh, with with the Bunny Hunters, and that's why Lil Wayne still sometimes by here with my boy Term and all them claim looters on the mob. I mm-hmm. think mob area, mm-hmm. uh, you know. So gangs get up under guys, or artists get up under guys from from, from gangs in L.A. and they start repping corrupt Philly boy, <laughs> claiming sixty crooks. Uh, you know that's a little bit of a stretch because. You know, I know he was young, 17, uh, when that happened. So I'll give him a little credit for hanging with the 60s a little longer. But a lot of these rappers made it, like Chris Brown. He claimed through Town Baru. Nigga ain't never had a house in Compton in his life. But that happens. Mm-hmm. And so Shaq got up under the main streets um, and was cool with him. And he mainly was got cool with this dude Stutterbox. I forget how the relationship go. A lot of y'all tell me that I always heard that he was closely related to uh, Minister Farrakhan, like a nephew or something. But they say, oh, his sister, he don't have no brothers and his sister is, uh, never had no son. I don't know how he calls himself, a, but I always heard that about Stutterbox. Stutterbox is very respected or was very respected out here mm. in LA. Very. At one time he used to run my boy Shah. He he his name was in the circle. He he was very well respected. Main Street uh Mafia Crips was a very respected neighborhood in LA. Shaq got it up under him somehow. But what study box messed up at it's because when you get close to people, you start thinking you probably want more money or own more, deserve more money than what a person is giving you for whatever reasons. That's just how human nature is. And that's just what happens. That's what she got a lot of his problems with. Where guys, as y'all see, Mob James tell y'all on every interview, <laughs> felt like they were cheated on wasn't done right. Mm-hmm. Which in my thing, they was given a fucking opportunity and a job Make the best of it as you can. Mm-hmm. Do what you can uh, with it. You know, you're in a position where you can get to the man. Use that position. Perfect person. Y'all gonna hate that I said it. Why going under? He didn't get up a job with with sugar or anything like that. But he got up under him, had his ear, learned the game. That nigga still feeding his family. Mm-hmm. Off of just that. That nigga was, he was, he'll tell you, a truck driver, driving trucks prior to that. The first time he got in the game was from being around me and then later on being around Shook. he tell y'all in the interview y'all listen to. 
Uh, so I say that to say, Stunbox, for some reason, felt he was owed more by Shaquille O'Neal. He took, as I remember the number, was either 300000 or $400,000. Forget what it was. But he allegedly had a picture. No, not a picture. A tape, a videotape of him, I heard, sticking his fists up. Shaq's wife, I don't want to say her name because I like her and I know she's doing good things out there. But she's the creator of Basketball Wide. Sticking her, his finger all up her ass and all of that. And doing all these things to her. And nigga, I'm going to expose your wife if you don't pay me X amount of dollars. Mm -hmm. So Shaq is like devastated like this. Mm -hmm. So now he goes and you know, talk to other guys that's involved in Main Street. And they like, what? That's why he kind of dissed the person talking about you ain't never putting no diapers on my child and all that. He's talking about this big, big time dude that's no longer with us that uh, they had a lot of respect and control over there in Main Street. Because they are the mafia town. Where, I mean, they have like a hierarchy. Mm. But most LA games, man, those little youngsters don't give up. <laughs> They'd be like, what, nigga? You say, what? <laughs> okay, whatever. Big old G. Mm -hmm. Take your broke ass. <laughs> they don't give a crap. Mm -hmm. But Main Street Mafia, I mean, I done heard stories from replicas when, when they were doing all those, uh, they were robbing arm trucks. Uh, they were big in the marijuana game, but they also used to take down armor trucks. Was robbing them like crazy. Mm -hmm. And I done heard dudes tell me where Del Dog had a pool table. The niggas would just walk in there, drop off a percentage of their lick, and walk out. Don't even say nothing to him. Mm -hmm. Just drop off money on, on, on top of the pool table. And so, uh, uh, so they'll know, like, hey, or whoever was like, oh, you ain't gonna be doing this to Shaq. Shaq, look out for us. So they started warring. And war with the internal. Mm -hmm. Well, I think they did something to him. Uh, kidnapped him, whooped on him, did something to, to uh, yeah, boy, Stutterbox. Mm -hmm. Well, he was kind of like banded from the from the hood. But I'm sure he had dudes with him that was like, uh, we with you, mm -hmm. you know, because everybody got that that dude from the sandbox. And so anyway, um, it went to the point where this court went to court to, uh, so hey, y'all see he's snitching, man. I kind of snitching on something that got transcripts and court paperwork out there. Mm. Just because your motherfucking ass ain't heard about it don't mean that it's snitching. Mm. Uh, well, he went to court, got on the stand, testified, uh, but apparently they were all found not guilty. And um, but he was trying to get them put in jail to the point where Shaq almost got indicted behind that. They were close, very, very close to indicting him on the, uh, that case. I really, truly believe the only reason they didn't because of the status mm -hmm. and, um, and his... Uh, you know, the, the, the type of attorneys they would have to do, uh, they, they would have to be going up against. And I believe if if they would have been found guilty, they was eventually was going to go after Shaq. And so that's why Shaq. That, plus he had got robbed before out there. He was just tired of L.A. Mm -hmm. Because Shaq had, I remember when Shaq came here in 96, niggas used to say, Fuck, she night gone. But that motherfucking Shaquille O'Neal done raised up the price of the pussy. Because he was out here buying bitches. He had a deal with Ford then. And he was putting all those females in 96, 97. If your woman popped up with an exposition back then, 
because Shakira was fucking her. Trust me. Y'all know any chick that y'all was with or y'all saw in 96, 97 in a Ford Expedition. That was compliments of Shaquille O'Neal. But yeah. Okay.